Hello guys, welcome to our channel. In this episode, we will discuss the basics of musculoskeletal system. I am the medical coding guy. One of the key techniques in the musculoskeletal system is to understand the anatomy and medical terms used. It will be a challenge to memorize all of them, but having the proper knowledge with the major bones and muscle and its location is the key to success in this chapter. We have more than 600 muscles in our body. It helps us move, lift objects, and makes our posture. It also helps us breathe, move our eyes, and also digest and move food in the GI tract. Our heart and other body parts are also made up of muscles. It is hard to memorize all the muscles in the body, but most of the major muscles are located in the anatomic illustration of the ICD book. It is also related to the skeletal system by working together with the help of tendons, which connects muscles to bones, your ligament which connects bones to bones. Here are some examples of the major muscles in the body. As you can see, you have a lot of muscle names located everywhere in the body. However, you don't have to really memorize all of this. But again, uh, proper understanding of these parts is a must. Biceps, triceps, and quadriceps are the most commonly known muscles in the body and usually we work out using those muscles. As for the other types of muscles, many of them ends with U.S., such as your glute, uh, gluteus medius, this one, okay, or gluteus maximus, all right, or the muscle name of latissimus, all right. So again, as you can see in the name itself, uh, it ends with U.S., so that's a good indicator that it's going to be a muscle, all right, if in case you will encounter this terms in the future in the actual exam. Some of the muscles end as well with the, the letters IS, such as your rectus abdominis, rectus femoris, and many more. That's how you will be managing the names of your muscles. Again, it's up to you on which technique you will use in order to understand the major muscles in the human body. You will be needing this one with some of the procedure codes in the future, okay? Now let's go to the skeletal system. It is the system that serves as the framework of our body. It is divided into two subdivisions. As you can see in the screen, you have your appendicular skeleton and the axial skeleton. Axial skeleton is the one that covers the brain and the, and the internal organs of the thoracic region, okay? So it's going to be the skull, the ribs, and the spinal section itself, all right? Again, some of the procedures in the CPT book states that the hip and pelvis is part of the axial skeleton. In the CPT section, radiology, you have your DEXA scan or bone density study, okay? So you have your 77080 and you have the term here axial skeleton, all right, versus appendicular skeleton, all right? Now, uh, for example, for these two codes, because you have uh, 77085 here as well, but let's focus on this one first. Axial skeleton here, it's mentioned hips and pelvis. You have to make sure to check this section right here to indicate that the hips and pelvis section is located in the axial skeleton, okay? So please take note of that. As for your uh, appendicular skeleton, on the other hand, you have the extremities here or the peripheral bones, okay? In this episode, we will also discuss the major bones that you need to have knowledge with. First is our skull or what we call the cranium. Do not forget that some of the bones has another term that you can use, all right? Such as your skull and cranium, okay? Now, skull and cranium houses our brain. As you can see on the screen, you have specific parts for the skull, but try to focus more on the bigger bone structures such as your nasal bones. You have the maxilla for the upper jaw and mandible for the lower jaw. Next are the bones in the chest which consists of the ribs and the sternum, which is also called the breastbone, okay? At the base portion of our sternum or the breastbone, we have this small region called your siphoid process. 
These bones houses the internal organs of the thoracic region, such as the lungs, the heart, and the mediastine. Okay? Next are the bones in the upper extremity. We have the shoulder region here, which consists of the upper end of the humerus, the clavicle, or what we call the collarbone. Okay? We have the scapula here, which is also known as your shoulder blades. And we have the humerus as the upper arm bone, ulna and wages as your forearm section. And we also have the bones in the wrist and hand, which is called the carpals, and metacarpals and phalanges in the distal portion. Okay? So please take note of that. Now, we go to your bones in the lower extremity region. It includes the hips, all right? And the pelvis here. Femur is the longest bone in the human body, which is also called our thigh region. Patella is the kneecap, and we have the joint here that connects the upper uh, leg and the lower leg section, which is called the knee, okay? We also have the tibia and the fibula here, which makes up our lower leg area. And also, we have your foot bones that's called the tarsal with metatarsals and the phalanges in the distal portion. And these are the major bones of the skeletal system. So just be aware of these major bones, and it will be easier for you to answer your ICD-10 CM codes and your procedure coding once you have the knowledge of these major bones. Diagnosis coding for musculoskeletal system conditions can be found in M and S codes most of the time. Chapter 12 or the M codes are the diseases for the musculoskeletal system, while Chapter 19 S codes include the injuries related to the musculoskeletal system. As you can see from the couple of examples here, for number one example, we have Mr. Smith fractured his right tibia, okay? Again, for your musculoskeletal system, laterality is very important. But don't forget to check the site first, okay, of the condition. So you have a condition here called fracture. Where's the site? It's going to be in the right tibia, all right? And please take note about the seventh character application. You can find it under your category S82. Whenever you want to look for the what the um, category or whenever you want to locate the seventh character that you will apply and since this is the first time of the patient here in this encounter you will use your s82.201a as your main code so let's take a look in our tabular list or index let's take a look with your s82 code okay so under your s82 we have your fracture of the lower leg section, all right, including the ankle, all right. So if you want to check the seventh character that you will apply, you need to take a look which fits the category or which fits the documentation, all right, within the following seventh character that you can apply. But since the patient is here for initial encounter, all right, or the first visit, you will be coding either this A, all right, for close fracture versus your initial encounter with open fracture. However, it is not mentioned, all right, that this is a closed fracture. It's clearly stated here under the note section and it's, a, it's an actual guideline for fracture coding that if a fracture is not indicated as open or closed, should be coded to closed. So we have to assume that this scenario here is what? It's a closed tibial fracture, okay? So going back here, we will choose your A or Alpha as your seventh character. But uh, we need to check the laterality here. That's why we chose S82.201A here as our answer, okay? So let's take a look with that code. So you have your 201 here, unspecified fracture. Nothing was mentioned about the type of fracture involved, right, of the shaft of tibia or we can clearly check the term right here. Fracture of tibia not otherwise specified. So choose this one and apply your alpha as your seventh character, okay? So again, that's how you will code your injury code, such as your fracture. As for the second code, the reason why we chose M here because this is a condition of the musculoskeletal system. So we have here a treatment for the spinal stenosis, okay? Spinal stenosis is not an injury, but rather it's a type of disease or condition. All right, for the spinal section, which is the skeletal system. So here we have the site of L5 to S1. Do not forget to check the parts of your spine. We have this three 
uh, major parts of the spine we have your cervical thoracic and lumbar okay we also have the sacral region here at the bottom portion of your lumbar area do not forget about the number of your vertebral segments per site okay so in this case you have your l5 to s1 all right for the condition of spinal stenosis so let's go to m48 here 0 0.07 to confirm to confirm the code that we have so if you go to the index of course just locate spinal stenosis and then what's the site here involved you have your l5 to s1 that's why we will choose your lumbosacral region here so the question here are we going to put the seventh character you can check your category code here since there's no seven character application but or in your book you will see a small circle right just before the code itself so if you don't have those things you can code this one as your final diagnosis so the code that will enter for today is your m48.07 okay and that's how you will code for your icd-10 and take note you have to review the guideline section of your M codes and S codes, all right? You have those things in your book, so please have a thorough review of that before you take your exam. As for the procedure coding for musculoskeletal system, most of the codes are located in the 20,000 series of the CPT book. While there are some codes that can be found as well in the HICPICS level 2 codes, again, for your devices and uh, again, equipments used for musculoskeletal problems, such as for wheelchair, uh, cane, walker, etc. Laterality is very important as well for coding, uh, especially in the CPT section. As you can see in the following scenario here, you have your F5 modifier used for the first scenario because again, the drainage of abscess was done for the right thumb. If you go to 26010, okay, it's uh, mentioned here that it's for your drainage of abscess for the finger, right? for simple. So, so just check this one. And for fingers and toes procedure, please indicate the modifier. You can find it at the very uh, first portion of your CPT book, the back of your cover page, okay? As for the second scenario here, you have your close treatment for the scapular fracture. Nothing was mentioned here about the laterality, but you have to indicate or ask the doctor, okay? Clarify or query the provider which part of the scapula or the shoulder blades is uh, fractured, okay? So you have to put your LC, or RT modifier. If it's both left and right, please put your modifier 50 for that, okay? So don't forget this uh, three modifiers that you usually use for musculoskeletal system problems, okay? And for the last scenario here, you have your open treatment of the distal right femoral fracture. So if you go to 27514, okay? We'll have a thorough discussion about your CPT coding for musculoskeletal systems in the future, okay? And uh, for this specific episode, we'll, uh, we're, we're just trying to discuss the basic concepts of your musculoskeletal system. All right, so this is an open treatment of femoral fracture, distal portion, okay? So please take note that for coding of fracture, check first the type of fracture involved, which part of the bone has fracture, and then afterwards check the approach that was not, okay? because you have different types of uh, fracture in the femoral region. For example, this one is your distal, medial, or lateral condylar femoral fracture, while this one, 27513, is your femoral supra or transcondylar fracture, all right? So again, check the type of fracture first, and then choose the code, check the laterality. In this case, you have your right open treatment of femoral fracture, okay? So you have 27514 with modifier RT. And that's all for the basics of musculoskeletal system. Watch out for the next episodes for the other systems, basic concepts, okay? And that's it for this episode, guys. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more information in the future about medical coding. So long, thank you so much, and do not forget that without knowledge, there is no power. Have a nice day. I am the medical coding guy. Peace.